You're listening to the Jay Bird Watching Podcast, the official podcast of jaysjournal.com and fansite.com. We are the official ballroom chat for everything Toronto Blue Jays baseball, from game highlights to rumors and all the stuff in between. Here is your host, Craig Borden, with co-host Jason Lyons and Liz McGuire. Now let's talk some Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Good evening, Blue Jays fans, and welcome to the All Things Babe Schneider edition of uh, Jay Bird Watching. I'm sorry, I just couldn't help it. He's on fire. So, Jason, Liz, welcome. How are we doing? This is the first week. It's just the three of us in a bit. Yeah, it's it's been a bit. I like. I don't know. It's kind of nice to be just just the crew. We had a wild and crazy week. Uh, was it last week or the week before? I have a time problem with oh, Mr. Man. Todd Stottlemyre, where I almost cried 15 times because we were interviewing like mm-hmm. uh, a legend of a man that felt when I was a kid felt so far away, right? Like all of those blue Jays and I lived in a small town. It just felt extra far. So to have the opportunity to talk to talk to Todd and for him to be such an awesome guy was super moving. Totally. Jason. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was epic. And I think that one of the things that it sort of started firestorm wise is I seem to be getting better response from some of the Jays on, on Twitter and stuff like that. So, I mean, it could be a gateway, you know, it could be a gateway um, guest that leads us to more of those 92, 93 blue Jays. We would love to have that obviously. Um, but just, you know, some of the insights and, and Interestingly, the thing that I, I keep seeing guys from this team coming back to over and over and over again is Cito Gaston, Cito Gaston, Cito Gaston. Like, I mean, he's yep. the he was completely the reason why those teams were as good as that they, they were. And it was awesome to hear him talk about Dave Winfield. Like, as much as Dave wow. Winfield is a, a you know a <laughs> Hall of Famer, a great baseball player, all the rest of that stuff. I mean, he's like Sidney Crosby. Like you just don't know anything about the guy. Like you really don't. Like like is he married? Does he have kids? Like who knows? No one knows. Dave Winfield knows. So it was nice to sort of see, you know, um, you know, a few other um parts of, of that team. Um so yeah, totally awesome for me. Um and as usual, my life is a total crap storm other than that. I mean, you know. You got two guys anywhere and everywhere with children. <laughs> I, I said it today. I was like, you have too many elite sports children doing elite sports children things, which sounds expensive, but fun. Uh, it's both of those things. It's super rewarding too. Like, I mean, um, you know, to see these kids try as hard as they do uh, at the things that they do, um, you know, makes you proud and it makes you, you, you realize that, you know, team sports are uh, and sports altogether, be them individual or whatever you're doing. They're very important. It's very hard to work as hard as you can. And, you know, don't let people push you into a direction you don't want to go. If you don't want to play hockey anymore and you're a Canadian, that doesn't matter. Just go and do, you know, go ski, go fish, go do something, anything. Just be out there and be active. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, I just got to mention the fact that, Jason, I thought it was awesome that you and Todd had that wonderful moment where you both leveled out that we made sure we put out on social media that point where you basically owned up for the fact that you weren't the best, you know, dad ride home car after the baseball yep. game. And you guys have found a way to level out with that. And then Todd having some of those stories that we go match up with that. I just thought that was great that you you two were actually personally, and I'm sure this is one of the Liz cry moments almost because he's like, Oh my God, he's such a cool guy. <laughs> so, but that was really cool that we were able to have him on and talk in that depth personally to this group, rather than just being the, I'd say one of the best World Series stories I've heard on the yeah. flip side of that coin, yeah. where he was in the bullpen, get warming up for the next inning. Joe Carter is the home run, basically, over the bullpen, and he goes, "Oh my God, who hit it?" And he runs out on the field. It was wild. <laughs> so yeah, yeah super cool. Just, on your mind. The whole way around. Like, I mean, I, I, I like all of the guests that we've had. We've had a lot of good ones over the over the years we've been together. Um, not to take away from the heck or anybody who we do love to see. And and please come back, Eric. Anything you know, and and all of our guests. We'll be back soon. I know. And I are already talking. I, I gotta say that that was next level. I've had responses from all over Twitter, from all over Facebook, from all over Instagram. It's been amazing. And, um, you know, we're hoping to get more of this going in. You know, I know as a group, collectively, we are going to try and uh, entertain our following as much as possible. And as entertaining as the three of us are, we know that superstars that have World Series rings are also pretty cool, too. So we, we're going to try and do that. The greatest comment the I got. I want to come back. Yeah, the, the greatest Go comment that, that I got was on Reddit, and it said some it was like some guy was like, "Bro, 
Are you saying you took a like transformed a line drive to the face to a Todd Stottlemyre interview? I was like, <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, like I paper did. Clip. That's the paper you know, clip to the house. Card. Right? <laughs> yeah. And um, like I was like, that's like best Jays fan ever right there. It's like leverage it to meet Todd Stottlemyre. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. Also, the can guy, I make this joke David because you saw where you were talking about your autograph earlier today on Twitter. I saw yeah. <laughs> I'm that a you're PSA. Like PSA marketed. Yeah, I'm a PSA. I'm in the PSA market, uh, okay. which is the most insane thing. Because like I was like, oh, I'll I'll put some of my cards into PSA, get them graded for like the kids in my family, right? I don't really care, but like it's cute. The kids can have something nice of my face, which is messed up. But uh, I was like, I was like. Oh, sh- sh- Riggers, like, they may think that my signature's a fraud, like a fraud. Like, I don't want to get called out. It's me, but they don't know it's me because I'm a nobody. So then, like, they were like, hey, Liz, like, I reached out to them, and the PSA was like, yeah, we know who you are. Way to go. And I was like, thank yeah. you. And then, like, there then I got mm-hmm. in their database, and I was like, do I have to do a form or something? And they're like, no, there's enough signatures out there that we can kind of verify it. And I was like, so for 25 bucks, this nobody's in the list. Let's oh. go. Most- <laughs> To that point, Liz, uh, not to steal Craig's. Yo, uh, let's go. That's Craig's. uh, That we could have a shirt. Um, But so I had my first of all of doing this, where a kid walked up, and I'm not lying to you when I said I say this. A kid walked up to me in a hockey arena and said, "You're the Jaybird watching guy," and I was like, "Yeah, dude, I am." I know. Hey, I know. PR. I don't that care where it comes from. Even if it's your face instead of mine, I'm fine with it. Everything. <laughs> that means every. And like the thing is, is that like you feel validated when it's kids who do it. Like you feel like, oh, like I got recognized by a 14 year old at a game once, and he just looked at me and said, "You're a tops card." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I am." And I was yeah. like, I felt like I finally felt the goodness that because I was kind of feeling weird about what almost dying and being a collectible. But as soon as you're just like you're the jaybird man you're mis- like that's you i was talking to a buddy about it who uh, is an actor his name's dan Payne. he does a lot of uh of hallmark stuff and he's been in a couple of he's, he's pretty famous dude as dudes go uh big handsome strapping man um and i was talking to him about it and he's like you know he's like the first time uh, you're never gonna admit that that first time is the first time it's never gonna it's never gonna feel any better than that first time where someone says I recognize you and I like what you do. So uh, yeah, big ups to that kid. I didn't get his name or anything like that because I thought that would be weird. Um, but, you know, thanks for listening. Well, and good. You're the first one to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, that was the whole thing. Like, I got I'm, knock I'm off kind of jealous. I'm like the only one that hasn't had that moment because I lived all the way down here in Rochester, New York. Nobody knows. We'll who have to fly out and do an event. Maybe we go together. <laughs> Let's do Bill's Mafia or something like that. Like, we'll get yeah. you jump, I'll, I'll jump off something onto Game a table on. and, you know. <laughs> Get t-shirts with your face on him. Well, because like that that's point, the thing. Maybe it'll maybe it'll happen next weekend because I'm coming up to hang out with Liz next weekend to watch the Marlins series. So who knows? It's true. Come on. It's and, true. I, and there's the other Let's part go. to that point. Best thing I love about this group is regardless of who walks up to anybody, we're happy to have a baseball chat with. Always. It's, always. That's always. The point. Always. Like the it's so easy to be started. nice and cool. <laughs> it's always oh, it's so easy to be nice and cool. Like that's why I got I was like. So somebody was like, Liz, somebody's forging your baseball card online. And I was like, oh, they look cool. They look like cool, right? So <laughs> I had nothing to give to kids. Now I have things like I have things I could hand out to children, kids. Somebody wants my baseball card for sure. Um, yeah, anyway. Speaking of that, did Scott give, Scott give you the pile of leftover counterfeit stuff that we were handing out in front of the ball No, game I literally <laughs> walk by his house 25 times when I go to the gym, and I will see him. I will, I, I'll see. I'll get it this weekend. He's on tour, I think. I, I asked him if he was going to be coming on the game when uh, I'm coming up, if we were going to get to hang out, all four of us again. And unfortunately, it sounds like he's going to be tripping. So maybe, hopefully, he's okay. still home this weekend. But anyway, on that note, I got you a fancy business card. Mm-hmm. I, it's not Jason, one of these. I Ooh. have it. It works great. <laughs> I'm using a bunch yeah. of times. That up. It's awesome. We're a real yeah. business? Uh, Let's go. Those RFID chip yeah. ones that you uh, put on your phone, you know, tap on somebody's phone, and it goes, boom, there's Jaybird watching. Yep. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, that's fancy. Yeah. All right, let's go. It can be Iron yours. Man stuff. Can be Liz. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk some damn baseball, because that's actually what we're supposed to be talking about. So all things baseball, all things fun, um, on episode 426 of the Jaybird Watching podcast. Um, today, we actually got to walk off a series in some nice fashion. I want to talk about today before we start diving into the week 
that was and honestly some of the headlines that we haven't gotten to over Looney Hot Dog Night and Todd Stolomeyer Night over the past couple of weeks. But we have a 30 home run Vlad Jr. season at hand, gang. Liz, you were the one that was all ah about it earlier, right? When we, before we got on the show. Tell me what you're thinking with Vlad being on the, you know, 30 home run club for this season. Yeah, it feels so good. It feels so good. Uh, I remember the, the first half of the season, and I think the, maybe the bases were loaded, and I think Vladdy might have been up. And we we needed that run. We needed like either we needed a walk off or something. And he didn't get it. And I remember thinking, I don't trust this man. I don't think he can do it. Like I remember saying, I don't think he can do it. There's something wrong. And I remember straight up bitching to my friends that why didn't our superstar <laughs> work out? Like why did our guy just fuck it not be the guy we needed? It feel like, like burning Toronto. bells all over again to you. Love yeah, that. like. I felt like it's a Toronto curse, a <laughs> Toronto curse. And uh, so now I'm so excited because he's he's the guy I want to root for. Uh, even when Vla- or Bo was hot, like last year or the year before, Vladdy was my guy. I wanted th- I wanted him forever. He stated he wants to stay in Toronto for his entire career. He's the guy. He's fun for kids. He's fun for me. He's a good time to watch. And so I'm so excited that he's he's succeeding, but like in such a like obvious obvious way like he had two home runs today he's just slamming that's oh, i love it love it now i don't know if you guys know or not like on the subject of of vladdy and i mean i gave vladdy a, a really hard time at the start of this season and he, he's never really like i mean obviously he's been on fire for the last you know couple of months but did you guys know this so the in the league batting average leaders he is number two behind bobby witt hits and for the people. season, he's <laughs> number three behind Witt and Arreyes. Um, when it comes to OBP leaders, he's number three behind Judge and Soto. Like, I mean, this guy is yeah. absolutely like. I mean, he's in the conversation for MVP. He's he's and I was just looking at this, and I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but the Blue Jays' record is not all that bad. Like when you look at the Rays and then Boston, yeah, and then you're moving upwards, it's like four wins difference between the team that that you know, yep. like the darlings of the American League East and the Jays, yeah. and except like bullpen, but bullpen, no, my guy, but bullpen, and but I mean they've and and they haven't been good, and so I mean I think all of this, you know, like this whole this whole thing that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. I mean, we'll recap some of the games, but I, I feel like sometimes it culminates itself in a game like today where we have Bassett go five innings, no hit baseball. He obviously he hurt himself or hurt was his it, back. Was it Bassett or, or was it Gus? Or sorry, Gosman. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. he comes out in the fifth inning with an, with an injury, which is kind of, I don't love that, but I mean, there's really only three weeks. It's near the end so. of the season. At the end of the day, it just sucks really for, the fact that we can't eat innings in our bullpen at all. And now you know that. Um, uh, except for the kid <laughs> who came in today, whoever came in today. Um, uh, oh, it's going to come to me. Oh, I'm going goodness. to the board. Uh, <laughs> it was. Is it what? Oh, crud. Uh, Dylan Tate. Dylan Tate. Yeah. Made his Blue Jays debut. debut. Um, yeah, he had a clean inning. And then of course, you know, you put in Genesis Cabrera and, and people get hits. So, um, you know, the, the Jays no again runs, look, l- looked good, but when you have to use, you know, less pitchers, they seem to be okay. Um, you know, the, the bullpen uh, basically needs to be gutted and redone. We all know that. Um, yeah. They've got to spend yeah. some serious j- jack in, in the off season in the, but I think that, um, you know, even Bo, who, you know, is now out again with a broken finger, um, he, which again just speaks to this whole year for the poor kid. Um, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think that that will speak strongly to Bo wanting to stay and Bo and Vladdy wanting to push forwards and actually push for a title within the next four years. I mean, you've got four or five real top level teams in the in the majors right now, and I think based on a lot of conversations, they sort of land at number five. Um, the other thing from this week and non Blue Jay related was it was pretty awesome to watch. Uh, the Brewers celebrate. Um, I, I mean, I, that's a team that I like. I, I, it's a bunch of guys I like. And it was really fun to watch them have Bob Euchre in the in the in the Dougie. And then, did you see Bob Euchre 
when they they covered him I'm in champagne either. and he's like i peed my pants um it was so funny anyways <laughs> The guy's a treasure, man. Oh, the uh, best. But that, like, that's my National League team. I've always been a Brewers fan, and um, and that's still one of my favorite ballparks I've ever been to. And, and then Canadian Josh Naylor, the, yeah, you know, went off and Cleveland. Cleveland's in. So. <laughs> I I want those oh. Naylor brothers. I speak about it often. I want can we the Naylor quickly, brothers. Can we quickly, as a team, discuss what the flip happened in the Mariners Yankees game with with Julio Rodriguez, like? Is there any explanation for what he uh, did? And, and you know what worst when you, base running ever. And when you start <laughs> to read about it and you're like, oh, like, you know, there, there was a lot of money riding on that game. And you're like, I mean, that's a complete bonehead. Like, he, my theory is he just didn't have the right count. That's the best I got, man. Is that but he wasn't even I don't, going to his own dugout? No. He was going to where the like Yankees he was were. That up that got thrown. Is he okay? <laughs> like, I don't doing. know. I mean, it, it was so bizarre. He went to pick up the bat and then realized the <laughs> that the ball hadn't been hit. Fa- the, the ball was still live. Anyways, yeah. r- regardless. And the, the, the Mariners were... the Mariners been doing weird stuff. Like, I know. The Mariners have been well, it's doing. because they're shooting themselves in the foot. <laughs> it's my their theory favorite is... thing to That's do exactly... come this time of year. Yeah, I think also my theory, remember, you know, the film Angels in the Upfield, how the angels are yeah. actively helping the, the angels win, like the ghost angels. I feel like perhaps there's yeah. like there's like reverse angels just messing up the Mariners games because like that's how insane that it is. Like that's what I got. Evil spirits. Yeah. Evil, evil shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm trying to get the vid going here, but there's way too much crap coming up on TikTok. For yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, I think that the, the Jays performance – but with you know within this this the Texas series hasn't been great, but yep. I mean I think there's been some high points certainly in the last two series. Like you know you look back to the St. Louis series, you know that's a pretty flipping good series. <laughs> they 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 sweep the the Cardinals. You know yep. they they lot they did drop two to the Mets, um, but yeah. you know I, I feel like you know even in Atlanta they they won a big one in Atlanta and and. I feel like it's, it, you know, there's certainly positives that can be taken. And I think we can finally answer the question, you know, that a lot of people, if you if you read the other, you know, um, some of the less quality blogs and, and you know, mm-hmm. they're constantly questioning the new guys even. And it's like, yeah. you know what, I think that Clement and uh, Barger and uh, all these guys have proven now that they are good enough to be everyday players. If not for the Jays, then... We need to start as the media building these people yeah. up, these players up. So if we do need to trade them, that we get a bounty back. Um, what are your, and David what Schneider, are your, you know, to, yeah, to Schneider. your point, Craig, yeah. David Schneider finally comes out of his his hibernation, you know, with only three weeks left in the season. Way to go, buddy. Um, yeah. But, I mean, he's hitting everything that's thrown at him. And, you know, thank mm-hmm. goodness. Baseball's a game of adjustments, man. That's yep. just how it is. But to that point, he's figured something out over the last few weeks, and then he's been getting more playing time. So that's the other part that you uh, get when you finally do get something that clicks. You got to have some way of continuing to, you know, get going. He, he was so bad after being an everyday left fielder for so long this season that there was no way in hell he was getting in the lineup. And I was honestly shocked he stuck in the majors. Um, and it was because he could basically come off the bat, uh, bench, and hit a home run. I really think yeah, it was I what think, stuck him around, right? I don't. I don't know if we're going to see him in see the him majors. Back. I don't know if we're going to see him on the team next year. Uh, but the thing is, it's like, I want to keep him. I want to pull him up when other guys go, you know, uh, are in a slump. I think he's a guy to keep. I don't think even if he's not on the team next year, I don't think this is the end of his major league career. I think baseball is no. again, a very hard game. Uh, and I think he's got a really good attitude about, he even just said like, he's just trying to stay, have an even keel about it. Um, yeah, but like I think that Shatter can and will continue to play kind of an important role in our in our team, whether that be as a full time member or as somebody we just kind of bring up midseason. I thank God he's above the Mendoza line now with a two hundred one batting average. But yep. this is the part that you, you miss. That he's exactly an average player as far as WAR is concerned. But he's got forty 
six RBIs. That 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 means he contributed when he did yeah. finally get hits. And there was a point there he was batting really well. It, it just shows how bad that slump really was for him because he was yeah. batting two eighty or something like that at that one Oof. point. And just, yeah. Yeah. well, he was silent <laughs> at the start of the year. He was silently doing well. He wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't. You know, going four for five, but he was going. You know, two for five. And um, yeah. in games where he wasn't, he was being effective at getting on base. And he was, you know, he was doing a very good job of, of the things that he needed to do. And then it was just like he jumped off a cliff um, baseball wise. And we've seen it before. We've seen other players have it happen to them. Um, I thought it was funny that uh, they reported that Dalton Varsho was hurt. And there was all these people that commented underneath and they're like, he's still playing. You know, like yeah. it was it was quite <laughs> funny to me to be like they were like, oh, he's out. He needs shoulder surgery. And they were like, what do you mean? Yeah. We thought he quit a month ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. But- Schneider was batting 262 in April. He batted 233 in May and then he batted 169 Oosh. for the whole month of June. Oosh. Had a little bit of resurgence in July, batting 211. And then it gets even worse. August, he batted 064. Oh, uh-huh. Boom. so that is where your batting average goes to shit that and to that bad. point i he just couldn't like i said the league adjusted something wasn't working in his swing whatever it is he's sure as shit turned that around seeing so far this month he's batting 257 with three home runs and nine rbis and that also includes a double and a triple so man just <laughs> I, I feel like david schneider is, is is easy to for me to root for and so i root for him like crazy uh because he feels like the every man of baseball it's like Davis is out there. He's not so glamorous. He's hustling. He's quietly just working his hardest, I believe. And I'm just like, I respect that. Yep. Uh, and I, I always hope things turn around. And I always, whenever Davis Schneider gets a dinger, it hits different. Yeah. For every team you for that you have that guy, that's the, um, I'm going to use this analogy, for every team that you had the Joe Carter on, you need the Derek Bell. In the 92 World Series for yeah. every, you know, I'm trying to think of really like for every Vernon Wells, you need the Reed Johnson, things like that. You, Davis Schneider could be one of those guys on any of these teams going forward. It really could be. And just be that guy that when you, you ride the hot streak and then he's going to have some lows and then you come back and ride the hot streak. How much different is Dalton Varsho's season offensively versus Davis Schneider's? Not really at all, but defensively. Oh. That, and I think about right. I think about Springer. I think about Springer in these discussions as well, right? Yeah. And it's like nobody's nobody's question. Well, I mean, they were they were questioning, but like, even, what was Springer's like uh, batting average in his low point? Like, can you get that up? Let's, yeah, I can get that up. <laughs> Give me a second. It wasn't good. We can Talking. effectively say that. Like, I mean, it yeah, was... he was he was below the Mendoza line for sure. Yes. For a long time. And he, igno- I mean, he acknowledged that. And he actually, I remember a time where he was saying, you know, I- I'm okay with them not playing me because yeah. I couldn't hit water if I fell out of a boat right now. You know, like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's what it is. And at least George had the, the wherewithal. And I also feel like George is going to have the wherewithal the, for the, what do we have for another two years? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So, I mean, he knows, he knows that he's the thing for me though, is he's still fast for a guy, his age, like he almost, he almost legged out that, that, that sort of half a bun. Yeah. Um, and, and a guy, his age should not be able to come that close on a play at, at first like that. So, I mean, he's still good in the outfield. He's, he's clearly fast enough to cover right. And he, and he has no problems out there. I mean, my hope is that the Jays can say, can, can, you know, see that, he needs to bunt a little bit more. He needs to take more pitches. He strikes out a lot, so he needs to take more pitches. But he also has to make sure that he he realizes what his shortcomings are and that he he plays into his own strengths to allow those two years to not be a total nightmare. I think this is really wild because we all remember how rough the beginning of his season was. So I'm going to lay this out, and then I'm going to tell you the tale of two, two parts of his season all at once. So in the month of April... He batted 211, May 206, June 226, and then he finally found it, batted 274 in July when things got hot. And then he took a complete backwards to that, where he went and batted a buck 65 for the month of August. Now, so far this month, he is batting 292. So hey. it sounds very all over the place, right? His first half and second half numbers so far are basically on top of each other. 
Because yeah. obviously, if you project out his second half season stuff right now, it's he's got the same batting average right now as he did in the first half, <laughs> literally within 0. 0.2 points, or sorry, 0. 0.002 points. And he's just short four more home runs and about 12 RBIs to get to where he, his first half numbers were. And that was in 90 games his first half. There was only 50 so far in this half. Yeah. <laughs> so, because the half isn't really the half anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. modified. But, I mean, I think, you know, Correct. as, as you know, as much as, as we've, you know, taken the, taken the crap out of these guys for the last <laughs> part of this season, I mean, the last two months haven't been all that bad. And we've seen a lot of bright spots. I mean, it's, you know, some of the injuries lately have been bothersome, but, uh, I mean, you want to just get through the year, make sure that the younger kids can go and play in, um, in Texas or wherever they're going to go play for the, for the, you know, their off season ball, get some good rips in. I mean, Addison Barger went to, from Vancouver to Texas or yeah, Texas and came out a complete animal. I mean, he was hitting like, like 480 in the Texas league. And these are all superstars. These aren't junk kids that are going to this. And I mean, I, I think that, that, Obviously, Clement and those guys, I don't think they go. I think they're too old to go, or I, I, I think most of them probably just say no, and, and you know, I'm just going to take the summer or the winter off. Um, but those younger guys, like, we need to see as much as we can from them, you know, and a hot start next year. they got to come out of the gate and, and at least dominate for a couple of months. And so then if they do have a skid, it isn't as, a, as effectual. Like, I mean mm-hmm. – you know, sure, the Yankees are in, and they had a pretty mean skid for a while, but they had a great start, and then they were able to to bob along yeah. rather than staying down like the Jays did for a while. So, so I just found the craziest 2024 Toronto Blue Jays stat that I'm very shocked by. Um, and this isn't about the players on the field, but I just happened to pull up the baseball reference page for this year as I was trying to see how many people were on this roster, and I was going to dive into some more silly things where you were kind of going there uh, – Jason, does anybody have a guess on where we rank in the American League for attendance? Uh, we're it's number f- way up five, there. F- five, uh, five between five and eight, maybe eleven. Five and eight or eleven. I'm guessing between those. Jason, and is it is it yeah. numbers or is it percent full? Those are two different stats. Out of fifteen, where do we rank? No, no. But what is the what is the ranking? Is it is it is it percentage of the stadium full or it's is it the number of people? It's total attendance. It's Number eleven, people. Three. Eleven. Okay, that, those, are those your final answers? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason, you missed by one. We're fourth. Great. That's great. I was on a Blue Jays morning had show. Two point five million people go through the, the turnstile so far this yeah. year for the. Yeah. I ball. I was on a, a morning I show. That, how bad we've been. Uh, I was on a morning show and uh, I was like, it was in Iowa. I was on an Iowa morning show and they were blasting me. Like I realized I rolled on and they were just going to be buffoons to me but i could handle that cool cool and i was like telling them about how how like people had the kids had like give, offered me their bobbleheads after i got hurt and the guys were like oh well, like there's nobody there and i was like i was like we have one of the highest attendances in the league i like came i just fired stats at them and i was like so you're wrong uh but yeah like fake news <laughs> it was like we may not do well baseball that we are cons- our attendance is Everything always else. good, which is actually a bummer to me. I think maybe I've spoken about this before. It's because we're Canada's team. We're not a regional team. If we were a regional team, our attendance would dip when the team was doing badly and put more pressure on our ownership to make adjustments that are needed. But because we have a Canadian-based team, so people are buying tickets a year ahead, coming from far away, that like we don't yeah. have the same kind of ebb and flow with attendance uh, at mm-hmm. when our team does bad. I will say this as well, and I, I've this has been noted, and this is the first year I've sort of noticed it away from the Jays broadcast. When the, obviously when it's Sportsnet and it's a Jays broadcast, you notice when they pan to the crowd and they show big groups of Jays fans and all the rest of that stuff. I was watching the Apple feed from a couple of weeks ago that yep. the Jays were on, and they actually were commenting on the Jays being one of the most well traveled teams behind mm-hmm. like like the Yankees. And, and a few other, like a real select group of teams that travel really, really, really well. Now, I mean, I think that speaks to two things. I think the people of Canada, when they go to American cities, if they know they're going to go to a baseball game, even somebody from Vancouver, Saskatchewan, 
uh, Alberta, they probably take something Blue Jays related or they buy something Blue Jays related mm-hmm. because they know they're going to go to a Jays game. Yeah. That being said, I also feel like there are a lot of Canadians down in the States who manage to stay as Jays fans because they live in cities where there is Major League Baseball. So you can, you know, be in Houston and go to Astros games. And when the Jays come, you throw your Jays gear on and da da da. But I mean, I've been overly impressed, not only with the crowds at home, but the crowds on the road and the knowledge of the crowds at home. And I don't give Toronto enough props for a lot of things, but I will say this for Jays fans who have been in attendance, they've recognized all the no-nos they've recognized all of the, you know, when anybody is in a slump and they break out of it, they, they've, they've been very good about being fans of a team. That's not very good, which yep. speaks really well to when they are rolling, like when they're rolling, it'll be impossible to get tickets. It'll be, it'll be like it, you know, like we want it to be, you want it to be yeah. that busy in the stadium you want it to have a buzz and a hum and like, the Vancouver Canadians final playoff games, the last two here before they went down and lost to Spokane, unfortunately, they were complete sellouts with them allowing people to stand in areas that they've never let people stand before because there was like an extra thousand people that wanted tickets. And so the, the, the I feel like, like there's a surge of, of baseball right now in the, in Canada, the Jays are taking advantage of that. And I mean, you know, hopefully like, like, you know, like we teased over the next couple of weeks here, we're going to get some of these young kids that are going to showcase for the Jays this week and for other teams. But these are Canadian kids who, you know, for lack of a better thing, can't really play baseball from like October until February, yeah. maybe, you know, and, and, and there's that kids, whole thing about it's cold outside. Well, yeah, but these kids are showing now on the world stage that Canadian baseball players can make an impact. And and so it's cool. And we were just talking about like the Naylor brothers. Like, I mean, yeah. they're one of the reasons why Cleveland is as good as they are right now. And, you 100%. know, I think that's super cool. So I wanted to take a quick piece of not talking Blue Jays for two seconds here because there is a Major League Baseball history thing that has happened within the last four minutes. Oh, did it want to guess? Shohei? Yep. Shohei just hit his 50th home run. Now has 50 stolen bases. The first athlete in Major League Baseball history. Is this breaking news? 50, did it just happen live? 50. Yeah. It just happened. I just saw it on Twitter, and I would love to show it, but my computer's lagging out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Who are they playing? Oh, they. Oh, he hit it where the. Um, they're playing the Marlins, and he hit it where the statue used to be. 109 miles an hour off the bat. So oh, just Lord. to say, he hit a little far, moderately opposite field. Wow. <laughs> well, good for him. <laughs> I mean, you know. He's earning his seven hundred million when he takes when he takes over ownership of the LA Dodgers in ten years and changes mm-hmm. them right. to the LA Otanis. You know, we'll all, yeah. yeah, you heard it here first. I mean, that. yeah, breaking news right here: <laughs> Shohei Otanis, uh, Los Angeles Dodgers baseball club. <laughs> I'll text Shohei now and tell him congrats. Yeah, so it would be Shohei Otani. Yeah. Pre- Shohei Otani presents the Los Angeles Dodgers. In Osaka. <laughs> in Osaka. <laughs> They'll be like the California Angels. The old cowboy hat, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that's really cool. I, I, as much as I, you know, being the, you know, what turned into Plane Gate and all the other stuff, um, that is cool for baseball that Shohei has done something on that crazy level. So where does he go from here is my first question because now he's been pitching again on the bullpens and stuff like that. What the hell does his season next year look like if he's able to I, – I don't think you end up being a 50-50 ball player again if you're going to turn around and play on the mound and hope to be a good pitcher, which he is all over again. But this He'll is just, just wild because he was a good pitcher and a great home run hitter last year. Now you talk – going even more wild next year. I don't know what your guys thought about that whole thing is, or is it, do you think there's gotta be a regression there on one end of the ball? Um, I don't know. I'm not making any predictions with this guy. I just, he's yeah. just such a unicorn. I, I, mean, I don't know. He, here's something. And I don't know if you guys saw this. I kind of threw this out into the ether this week. So there's never been a, a player to DH and win uh, an MVP. It's never happened. Uh, Paul Molitor won an MVP uh, in the playoffs, uh, a World Series MVP. World Series. Um, 
David Ortiz was, you know, talked about as the MVP a number of times, but it's never been given to a non-position player. Now, here's my thinking. Otani has done something that very few, super rare air. 50-50 is as rare as it gets. You know, right. it's it's something to be celebrated and all of the rest of it. He's not the MVP. It's it's Who just is? the truth. He's Who he's not he uh, Acuna. Um I mean, oh, there, there's guys out. <laughs> He's out. Yeah, I know. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, maybe Aaron, even Aaron Judge. I mean, Aaron Judge is in there every day playing. He's he's crushing home runs. He's playing really well on the outfield. Um, I just think it's really hard to give the MVP to Otani when he doesn't play a position. And uh, people will probably thrash me on this, but, um, you know, I don't care. You're not the only one saying it. Yeah, the I mean, odds are in uh, favor of Shohei Otani, but there's two other ones. Which this is where I think you have to give it to Shohei Otani. The next two closest "quote unquote" MVP candidates, according to the odds, on funny enough, the same place that we're going to talk about later, Underdog Sports. <laughs> um, Francisco Lindor is the next closest, and it's Bobby. It's he's seven seven hundred points over. Right, Lindor. Sorry, that's, that's actually who I meant. Where does Bobby? Sorry, I know it's like separate, but where does Bobby like Bobby? He's got to be just underneath that. Compared to that, okay. Bobby Witt Jr. is just underneath Aaron Judge, followed by teammate Juan Soto. But it is actually not a much closer race according to the AL MVP odds. Yeah. Now, winning, I mean, uh, if you look at it on whole, plus a thousand. Bobby Witt should be the guy who's in consideration more than the like. I mean, Bobby Witt is third in slugging. He leads in runs. He's what fourth in OBP. He's leads batting average. He leads in hits. Yep. Like I mean, <laughs> he's doing more for his team than the other guys. The, the other guys are, are. I mean, home runs help your team, unless of course it's a twelve nothing yep. game and you make it twelve one. You know, but yep. to have Bobby Witt mentioned in all those different categories, of which Shohei is in one, two three four of them bobby witt has is in six of those so i mean you know i get it i get where people you know talk about it but if you just looked at that what i was just looking at bobby witt is performing better than shohei otani and he plays shortstop like i and, mean it, yes. and, and his name is bobby i just want to yeah. like straight up be like that's it oh, and junior. Name. junior bobby but junior and like that's a that's a baseball name Yep, it is. Yep. He's a baseball player. Uh, just, just, but if you were looking at the pure, the statistic, the statistician fun that it is, Saber Metrics and Major League Baseball, Aaron Judge is a 9.8 war right now. Jesus. Because he plays oh. center field and he is having an Aaron Judge season. How do you not give it to him? Like, how do you give it to a guy <laughs> who walks up three times a, a game? And if the, the pitcher's stupid enough to throw it down Main Street, it goes out of the yard. Like, Oh, you mean like our pictures? <laughs> let's not talk about let's not talk about Yena, Yena Cabrera and his terrible uh, view of the strike zone. Um but like <laughs> hold on, I gotta correct Jason here. Yena says Cabrera wears these chains though, and the way they sparkle. Mm, mm. Yeah, swing. <laughs> yeah, well, there it is. Bling bling. <laughs> Start a but jewelry. Store. He's been doing well better. But <laughs> let's still, go. Yeah. Sorry, That's Yenesis. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Next week, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, gee, hey. <laughs> I, I actually, I heard a rumor that Genesis Cabrera is quite a sassy man. That's the rumor that I've heard. He's sassy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does I he know, have he, he, I know, was honestly shocked he didn't get. I was honestly shocked he almost didn't get thrown out of the game the other night because he was shouting at um I forget who at first base after he walked. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what but, Riz yeah, no, is. He, I don't but know. But I'm sure he's got it. I got it. Does it, is he possibly a Sigma Skibbity Toilet? That's uh, also something I hear. Oh, uh, I was like, Jason, why, why are you scatting, my guy? You good? Okay. No, this is what kids talk. This yeah. is kid talk. Squeak. See, this is why we have to have the kids on next week. Yeah. They were supposed to be on this week. We got to be talking all the, about the new slang so we can talk about and all kinds of stuff. It's awesome. I want I drip. It. And I also want a drip report from the kids. Like, what oh. is the drip? I want, like, what is the drip? Aria, Aria sliding mitts. Yeah, I um, want to hear what the drip I feel like is. I got to get a graphic made up. This I gotta, like, my kids can tell you that. Yeah, I want the drip report because, like, I, like, I've never 
had somebody so interested in various jewelries is my 15 year old baseball playing nephew maybe he's 16 i can't do the math but like yeah man you, he's got to have <laughs> the chains you got to have the things you got to have things yeah, just the cuban links the he's fake wearing cuban links. he's wearing a cross but he, he he's, not, he's religious. not religious i like it when they paint a cross on their face and i'm like oh i must be religious and they're like what and you're like no uh -huh. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> so there is one fun story in Blue Jays baseball that I'm trying to redig back up, but I'm sure you heard this on the broadcast or read the article that Keegan Matheson wrote recently that part of Davis Schneider's resurgence is he found some certain lumber left over for some Blue Jays players that have been exiting the team. And he's not in those three home runs that he hit from back to back to back games. So um, I think Keegan's exact words were the traveling, uh, you know, the, yeah, what was that? The traveling sisterhood of the, you know, no, it was, the, it, no, it, was no <laughs> it was the brotherhood of the traveling, like pants. bats. bats. Yeah, something like that, That's but it was a play on the on the sisterhood of traveling pants, which I always have time for. Um, I have I love traveling pants. <laughs> Thank you. There I go. Yes, my daughter okay. wasn't right age, I guess. <laughs> traveling pants slaps. All right, so yeah, it was Danny Jansen's bat. I'm going to ask Jason's question: Is it just a thing of feeling different, or like is it just like maybe a different bat length? He was like never tried before. Yeah, I think that, so I'm, I'm just starting to learn a lot. I, I've never really dealt with wood bats in my whole life and big up yeah. to, to Birdman Bats. Uh, Gary, congratulations on your wedding. Enjoy your time in Spain. Um, so one of the things I have come to find out is that, um, you know, with, with an aluminum bat or with a composite bat, sorry, Jesus, I made myself sound really old there. But with a composite bat, I mean, you know, there's the hype fire. There's the there's a couple of bats that are are super hot. The kids all use them, and they basically, you know, the acceleration on the ball is, I'd say, twenty to thirty five feet. Um, and then when you go to wood, they get a real slap in the face as to what a you know what they're actually how far they can hit the ball. Um, I find that the 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 material the bat is made out of. I mean, you've really only got ash, maple, and birch. Those are the three major ones. But yeah, I mean, if you look at some guys use the bed knob handle and some guys use a really axe. small handle and some guys use an axe handle and, you know, they are constantly, I've come to learn this by, by giving some of the, the um, uh, Vancouver Canadians, some of the Birdman bats to try it. Some, it is just sometimes putting it in your hand and the first pitch that comes in, you just, you know, it's like a tuning fork and you hit it and you're like, wow, that feels a lot better than my bat. It may be garbage, but you know, there's a mental part of your equipment that when you're, I mean, when you're in playing at the, the C's level, it's different because those guys are paying for their own bats. Actually, the guys in the majors are paying for their own bats too. And I think everyone should know this out there. This is a, this is a, a thing that actually happens. Like if you're a baseball player in the majors, you don't get free bats. Somebody pays for them, whether it's your agent, whether you pay for them yourself, whether the team pays for them, somebody's paying for those bats. So when you're making a choice, it's it's not based on brand normally because they'll have 40 bats with no brand on them. They'll go try them and they're like, I love this one. And they're like, OK, well, that's the Birdman, you know, uh, pressed maple. And then they, they go order a dozen of those and then they try them and then they'll sometimes run through different bat companies during the year. Um, but because they're not really getting paid to use them, their sponsorship for bats is comes completely down to what they want to use. So, um, I mean, I'm sure if you're Mike Trout or Aaron Judge or, you know, those guys probably aren't paying for their bats technically, but somebody is. Um, I mean, you don't see you don't see Judge out shilling Shan Chandler bats anywhere. He uses a Chandler bat, but you don't see them on a poster or doing no. commercials or anything online saying, Hey, use a Chandler bat. So, I mean, if he's not getting paid to do it, then he's not getting paid to do it. So, I mean, it's, no. I, and I find that interesting too. Like, like Otani, like, I mean, they barely use it. The guy's a superstar and they barely use this guy to move any product. Like, does anybody know what he uses for cleats? I only know because they show it here in the states a lot, and he new is balance. a New Balance, right? Correct. Oh. <laughs> but but if you out don't, of all things, New Balance. <laughs> if you don't dig in, you don't know. And he uses a Mizuno, or uh, sorry, he uses a uh, was using a, an Asics bat for a long time that no one can even buy. They don't even sell them. 
Like, it doesn't make yeah, any weird. sense for, for Louisville Slugger to not go to this guy and say, hey, you know what? I know you took a haircut to play baseball this year. How about we give you $10 million to, to use our bats and, and we need you everywhere with them. But, yeah, uh, you know, I, I don't see it. deal is why he didn't give a snot about the whole deferred money thing. Because yeah, he's making I, so much money off of the t- TV commercials and all that kind of stuff just to be their, uh, basically to be their Michael Jordan. Yeah, but to your At point, Liz, I think that the big thing, it, it is always going to come down to this is feel. That, that you could put tape over the label and let guys hit 50 different bats and they're going to go with the one that feels the best. Um, yeah. That's why you should buy Birdman so, bats because they feel awesome. <laughs> there's your plug. So just to, for the Blue Jay fan that hasn't caught this story yet, Babe Schneider, who is obviously hitting more home runs, to break out of his slump, he grabbed a bat off of the bat rack or out of the dugout, whatever. That used to be Danny Jansen's bat. He hits his first home run with the Danny Jansen bat. Then the next two games, he pulled another one out, and it was IKFs. So he hit his following two home runs over the past week with an old IKF bat. (laughs) So he hasn't used his bat for three home runs, and I would say I'm not going back to my own lumber. There's something there that's working. I will quote the great baseball movie that is Bull Durham. You don't fuck with a winning streak. And right now, David Schneider is on a winning streak. (laughs) And didn't last year, didn't Vladdy get out of his, uh, didn't he uh, get one of Acuna's bats or somebody, somebody got a hit in one of the games. It was one of the big name guys and he dropped the bat and the bat boy came out and got it and, and put it in the Jays dugout rather than taking it to where it was supposed to go. And then Vladdy went on fire with this thing. And then it finally broke. I remember this. And he he reached out to whoever it was to say, hey, can you send me some more of those bats? And they were like, just get them made, dummy. Like, just go call the company oh, and get I them need made. The and he was like, no, no, no. I need the, <laughs> the ones. I need those ones from you. So... I don't know. It's, this is like, um, you know, how many how many cups of rum can Joe Bo drink, right? No, lots. <laughs> I need some voodoo. No. Uh, I'm going to just give hot, my like own it. hot observation about bats. Get ready. So it's cheaper to sometimes buy game-used bats from players who maybe didn't make much of an impact than it would to buy the bat new. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and like, and like these are uncracked used bats, <laughs> but it's they're cheaper than the – you're like 100 bucks, man. Anyway. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, and there's lots of that out there too. Like, I mean, the kids that are out there right now, I mean, it's no, I know it's hard because you can't go anywhere and hit a wood bat. Like you just, there's, there's no, you can't go to Dick's down in the States and hit a wood bat. They don't let you, you're allowed to hit the, they have some composites you can hit, but never the good ones. So to pick a good wood bat is hard because you don't get a chance. Take advantage of your friends. When you show up at ball or when you show up at a tournament or when you show up somewhere and you see a bat you've never tried, See if somebody will let you have a couple of rips on it in BP. You know, like one of the things that that we do well, um, you know, with the Birdman stuff is that they they make bats that hit hit the ball a long way, but they also don't mark up. So you don't get seam scuffs on the bats. And, yeah, you know, so that's an important thing with the bat lasting long. But, I mean, it all comes down to feel. Like once it's in your hands, you, you know if you like it or not. I don't know if either of you watch in the chat, but apparently um, you have a fan from afar, Liz, because somebody said, hey, is that Foul Ball Lady? Hi, what's up? <laughs> it said, is. Yes. This is this is Foul Ball Lady. Uh, I have a lovely dent in my head, but we're staying, we're staying yeah. positive. And a proud member of our wonderful team here, third partner on the show. <laughs> so hopefully somebody I like, will make like some way. Way. I'm trying to, to I'm trying to rebrand as Tops card. Like... There you go. Unearned, <laughs> sorry, unearned tops card. I will wear a t-shirt that says I know foul ball lady. Let's go. I'm putting that cool. on the record right now. Like make it foul, foul ball, foul ball lady <laughs> seems too fancy. I know foul ball girl. And she's what? a real yeah. bitch. Maybe our new friends <laughs> at Underdog Fantasy could uh that could be first part of our swag Guess package. That. Would be yeah. we know foul, you foul ball lady. So all I'm seeing here is one of those futures, you know, or those shirts that has the list that it's like, you know, this, 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 and this, and that says home or something like that on for like Blue Jays. And I'm seeing one that has a bunch of stuff on it. It says home plate lady, foul ball girl. Getty Lee. Let's watching go. There you go. Getty yeah. Lee. Mother <laughs> Getty I'm Lee. Still trying to get Getty on. Yeah, Jaybird watching guy, foul ball girl. Yeah. yeah. Craig, Craig's need his little, Craig needs a little name. 
Buffalo. I need a nickname other than the guy that giggles at everything. Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Mr. It's, giggles. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Mr. Giggles. There it is. So, anyways, but on that note, um, oh, yeah. There's some. Yeah, they said they saw you on an interview. Uh, Liz is the next piece to that part. So there you go. My friend caught her at the dome during her. Yeah, interview. I did a lot of interviews outside the dome. And the thing is, is that people were handing me beers in between interviews. Uh, so I was out there with my black eyes, real smashed in, just chugging beers, doing interviews outside the dome. Let's go. And you're wondering, people out there wonder why we picked Liz to to come on the podcast. I mean, it's. I think yep. that that says it all right there. That one statement. <laughs> well, we had the bar room. We needed somebody else to chat with. And to you that point, it. shenanigans let, met level set the same thing. But we actually finally got a real question from Tanias35. Hey, a perspective question. Do you appreciate where the Jays are not and not be in the position that the Mariners are in right now? I do. I'm going to agree gonna... with that. I'm happy with not being a Seattle Mariners fan right now. I agree. But God, um, I also like, let's remember the Jays are kind of where we wanted them to be. We knew we weren't going to make it into the postseason this year which makes me enjoy the games more and we're watching the kids get a chance to play which for me is just like uh last year was worse we were going into the wild card when i when we weren't the bats weren't igniting it was the worst feeling and we'll talk about the year before with the mariners but now i'm kind of like i like where we are i'm excited for postseason baseball i haven't i do have my pick but it's people don't won't want, want to hear my pick um but it's the Dodgers and everyone's mad about that. Anyway, so and I'm pumped. There you okay. go. Yeah. So, I, Mr. Lyons, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think that that we I think we expected more of the Jays, you know, a year ago when we started talking about this year. Um, and then I think we were we had we had our highs and lows. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, a, as a person from Vancouver that doesn't really like the Seattle sports teams. I, I mean, I really like what's happening down there right now. And it seems to be their MO. It seems to be, you know, they did ca catch the Jays a couple of years ago sleeping and, you know, same with Minnesota. But I will say this. I, I do like the fact that, um, you know, like Liz says, we've got a lot in the cupboard right now. And I feel like properly used, I think that the Jays can go on a pretty significant run Again, properly used. I think we need to, to heed the advice of our good friend Todd Stottlemyre and find our Dave Winfield. Again, there's another good shirt. Find I agree. Dave Winfield. Yeah. Um, find my Dave Winfield. That's almost that. Yeah. Uh, it's very Bound Francis. Like, uh, what was it? Uh, trust your shit. Let it yeah. Eat. yeah. Yeah. Did you Did you guys see him getting interviewed? And they were talking. They were talking to him about about this season. He's like, Oh, come on. He's like, I don't want to talk about this season. He's like, <laughs> I think next year. I can be a, you know, a person that goes every five days and does this fairly regularly. He's he just oozing confidence right now. And I love that he talks about meditating and, and doing other stuff that very few guys out there would, you know, players would say, this is what I do. So, you know, he likes I got sage nothing in the, but time. In the clubhouse. He likes he needs sage to grow, in the clubhouse. He needs to grow a little bit of hair back though. He looks, um, <laughs> he looks up. rough. <laughs> Um, he looks like every shape. man on Queen Street. He looks like every Toronto Toronto man's on Queen it's, Street. It's, like my thing was this. So well, I tweeted how did you out. Find him then? Uh, I tweeted out um, the picture of him on the bike when he was leaving the dome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which caught has caught some fire there. Uh, my thing is, buddy, I need you to wear a helmet. I like I I like I need you to. You, you know what? Like that's his I'm not, life choice. You can't true, make him like, wear a helmet. No, I can't. I can't. But like. It's Don't like put my baby in a corner. Nobody puts for baby my, in a corner. For my baseball team, I'm like, come on, man. For the Jays, like, come on. Uh, too funny. Liz is ready to have the, uh, what was it, non-football activities part of the contract, be, yeah. you know, all yeah. set. <laughs> so, Jason, I know you have a hard stop coming up here in a few minutes. And seeing we do have a new sponsor on the show, I want to make sure we give them some time. And I thought it would be fun to use some of the, uh, I'll say, discretionary funds that we were provided to make our first bet as a group. So I pulled a game for this evening because it won't let me go a day into the future. So if anybody hasn't heard yet, we're linked up with Underdog Fantasy Sports. Um, yes, we're those shills now that are going to 100% join Major League Baseball in the non-traditional Pete Rose fashion and jump 100% into sports betting. And here we are. So the question would be as far as 
things that these are the prop bets for this evening. Um, we have Brandon Brandon Fat's going to be on the uh, mound tonight. Corbin Carroll's obviously been on fire. Oh. Um, we got the Brewers playing the Arizona Diamondbacks, and this is a hell of a matchup yeah, for this that's, evening. That's, that's kind of why good. I thought it might not be a bad idea to uh, talk some playoff implications here, regardless of the fact that Jason, as you mentioned, Twins or the Brewers are in. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to take a vote from around the table here. I would say I like the action that's on Jackson Chorio for total bases, maybe, but I'm going to ask you two what you guys think out of those uh, four guys right there. What's the Period. Corbin Carroll? What's the, oh, what's Corbin Carroll got there? Corbin Carroll is eight, eight fantasy points, higher or low, a home run, um, more than higher on two total base he needs two total bases basically or he's going to have a hit a run or an rbi some combination of those two things well i don't mind that i don't mind that uh total bases that 1.5 total bases for corbin carroll i don't mind that at all i don't have a problem with that either what do you think liz uh, i got no problem with Lock that it in. jason said jason <laughs> said <laughs> oh those bastards they killed, they killed it <laughs> i can't even do that one apparently too many people took it <laughs> oh okay well, Want to take that same bet with Jackson Chirio? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Love Chirio. Yeah, Jason. There said. we go. So we'll just lock that in, and this is how easy it is. Let's go. Apparently, as long as you don't find the bet that is like you know already locked out. Yeah, locked out. Yeah, uh, you know, big big thank you to Underdog Fantasy, and we're happy to be part of the team. And um, you know, it's it's it, as you guys can see here, it's a pretty easy site. It's easy to use, um, and it makes it fun. Um, you know, by no means, uh, you know, be careful when you're doing it. Obviously. Um, gambling is an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. Um, it can certainly make fun, you know, sports fun, but, you know, really make sure that you are, um, keeping track of what you're doing. Um, cause it can get out of control, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm putting a, I'm putting a mere five bucks on it. Oh! <laughs> Let's go. So, Let's yeah, go. Big hitter. Let's big go. Big hitter. Big Gotta get one house. going. <laughs> I'm just happy somebody gave us money for the show for a change. Hey, we're worth it. We'll turn we into are real worth profit. It. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Good deal. So now we'll end the show like we normally do with our illustrious picks to click. We are getting down to the end of the season, and um, the, our friends, the Looney Hot Dog Kings, put the our, and uh, Todd Stottlemyre last week had Vlad Jr. So there you go for that. Liz, you had Spencer Horowitz. Jason, I'm sorry to say you had Will Wagner who got hurt. I know. And then I had Alejandro Kirk and I closed the stats like an idiot. <laughs> so give me a second. <laughs> well, Vlad, somebody had Vladdy, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. That would be Mr. Todd Stottlemyre yeah. is a smart person. And uh, his today counts because it was done before the show. Yeah. So I mean, two home runs for him, and nobody picked Davis Schneider. So that would have been the hottest actual bat, I think, out of those ones. And Vlad bet a mere 364 with two home runs, five RBIs, eight hits. Davis Schneider was the only offensive G-code. force better than him. Yeah. And then we had, yep, Kirk's down a bit. Spencer Horowitz, you would have beat me, Liz, at least. <laughs> so that Stotts is going to put it. Todd Stottlemyre for the win, still yeah. maintaining the champion. I'm going to have to make sure we tell him about that whole thing that he won his pick to click because now he actually ties. Um, well, he took the, yeah, no, he tied the guest spot now ties Liz at six. I am trailing with four wins. Jason, you have seven. Liz coming on to the show Ooh, mid season. Let's yeah. go. Cinderella story, Angels in the Outfield. Let's yeah. get it. I'm going to, are we doing, are, I'm going to pick mine. We all know my yeah, picks go. to click. It's go. Vladdy. It's Vladdy. I, I take him Vladdy. It's Vladdy, locking it in. <laughs> Um, I got to pick the, see, we don't have a guest on this week. They get to have the unfortunate handicap. That is the rules of whoever is the most, the everyday player that has the worst last week. And that is currently sadly Ernie Clement. So the other roommate is struggling. Click the other direction. So, but that is still a good spot for the uh, guest spot to be able to do something with it. So Jason, your pick. Uh, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to take George Springer. Oh, I like that. Feeling a feeling a Springer Dinger coming? Yeah, I feel like there's a Springer <laughs> Dinger on the way. There you go. Um, I, I honestly, I, I I know who I want to pick, but I don't know if he's going to play enough over the, the next week. Follow but he played your a heart. Lot this past Follow week. it. And I. I've been, I, I'm sure everybody's noticed that from our account, I've had a man crush Monday going on on Nathan Lucas. <laughs> so I'm thinking I got to do it. Take a chance. On so he's a, he's such a babe. It. Such a babe. Yeah. 
I'm, I got to go with a hot hand. He had six hits last week. I know. And three RBIs. <laughs> so and two of those were doubles and a triple. <laughs> Can't lose on that, usually, unless it's to the cheat code that is whose Liz pick is yeah. with Vlad Jr. So oh, is there anything last minutes? I know you got to go, Jason. No, I got to roll. All Love right, you guys. I'll yeah. sign off. <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk soon about the promo thing. Sweet. Anyway, Blue Jays fans, thank you very much for tuning in to a wonderful evening of Jaybird watching. Make sure you check out Underdog Fantasy and our friends over at fansite.com, jaysjournal.com. And please, for the love of God, join the conversations like Tanias did tonight. We're very happy to chit-chat, as you saw. He put those up. I had those up on the screen within minutes. We will chat with you. We are the barroom chat for Blue Jays fans. I will be in Toronto with Liz at the Marlins series for the Saturday Sunday game. Make sure you come and join us. Find us wherever you happen to be. Say hello. I'd like to be recognized, maybe. <laughs> so on that, Blue Jays fans, take care. Have a great evening. And as always, let's go Blue Jays. Thank you for listening to the Jaybird Watching Podcast. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, at BirdWatchingGC, and our YouTube channel. If you want to support the show and get extra content, please consider joining us to our Patreon at patreon.com slash birdwatchinggc. Go Jays, go. Woo!